Let's start with, this is Bonnie Yates. She's a special education attorney working with the Tolner Law Offices, and she is amazing. And she joins us to talk about your rights on a regular basis. And Bonnie, tell us about Tolner Law Offices and give us the disclaimer. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Tolner Law Offices is an aid attorney firm with um, locations in San Jose, El Segundo and Irvine, and we do special education and disability discrimination and a few million other things. And um, we're happy to be here this morning to talk to you during school closure about your rights. Anything we say on this program is basically being said from the vantage point of working in California and under California law. And if you need an attorney in another state, we refer you to COPA, copaa.net. Um, if you are in California and you want a consultation with us, we do that on a complimentary basis. And you can go to our website, uh, fill in the paperwork, and we'll get back to you with a time to talk. Um, we are giving lots of general advice these days, particularly in light of the rule changes since school closure. But I'm really finding that I'm also getting very specific questions from people. And if you do have a specific question, it really, this isn't really a substitute for that. Also, I just heard about this cool thing called Air Tutor. Mm -hmm. somebody, do you know about Air Tutor? No. It's supposedly like the most optimal online virtual education platform. And I just heard about it from another attorney today. People may want to check it out. It's supposed to be great for kids who are going to have to do this online learning for a while. I haven't researched it yet, but. Okay. Air Tutor, though. We'll yeah, AIR Tutor. Yeah. All right. I, yeah. I, I'll bet they're going to be a guest on this show next week. You know, that would be very cool. That's, uh, cool. I've made a note. Okay. Um, so, Bonnie, we had some questions that were left over. Do we want to launch into those or do we, we do. have something you want? Okay. So the first question that we had was, can we ask to have our kid repeat their grade in light of all this stuff, I'm presuming? In our case, our son is in 11th grade. It, you know, that's a hard one because you're kind of, um, you know, right up against uh, graduating the next year. You didn't say if your son was on a high school diploma track or whether he's going to get a certificate of completion, but it, it really sounds as if you're thinking he's going to graduate in the 12th grade year. Um, I have had some discussions with districts about retention recently, which surprised me because retention is a dirty word. I think rather than retention for the 11th grade, I think the question should be, are you going to have sufficient credits to val to um, graduate from high school by the end of next year? Do you feel like if you have been given credit in certain subjects, that's a realistic reflection of what your student actually knows and can do? Or, I, I mean, I think you do. See, this is a problem with my little curtain setup. Um, <laughs> I think you do need to have an IEP meeting ASAP to discuss these issues. And I wouldn't be talking about retention. I'd be saying delay graduation to make sure that, that the person has enough time to do credit recovery. We talked about graduation recently on the show, and I mentioned that the problem you run into is you, if you get like too close to your 12th grade graduation date, you can't file for due process and invoke stay put. And if you actually do graduate, it's very unlikely that you're gonna be able to get into due process after the fact and get compensatory education. So now is the time to talk about this. The trouble with graduation in California is they got rid of the high school exit exam and they basically now say that the particular school district just has to offer equivalent courses that meet you know, the academic requirements for the state of California. And they don't like look under the sheets so much by which I mean, if you got a C in expository language, or I don't know what the language arts class would be, they don't say, well, you passed this class, but when we test your reading, you're reading on a fourth grade level. They just say, you passed the class. So those challenges are difficult because of that. And you're, if you are gonna try to retain the student for an extra year or two or whatever it's gonna be, you're definitely gonna need an outside evaluation to show that the student can't possibly be passing some of these 
classes that he's supposedly passing given his skill level. So there's, it, it can be done. There's a workup required um, and you got to start it now, which is good. You got like some months to work this out. I'm glad you're not in 12th grade or your, yeah. your students not in 12th grade. Absolutely. Thank you for all that. Hey, thanks for watching Autism Live. To subscribe, click here. And if you'd like to check out some more of our videos, click here.